Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. To new subscribers, you have perhaps a lot to catch up on. I would recommend that you should look at the Russia and China playlist that is on this channel to all subscribers. The information on this channel has been helpfully arranged for you by theme. There's the Russia and China playlist. There's the America playlist. There's um, the Sin series playlist. There's a playlist for repentance. There is a playlist for the supernatural that's divided into two. One is on Nephilim, giants, fallen angels. The other are on other supernatural phenomena, such as these demonic creatures called aliens and things like that. And I will soon work on putting up most of the new prophecies, probably a hundred of them or more, adding them either to the existing, existing playlists or putting them into brand new playlists where they can more comfortably fit. And so I have been receiving prophecy from the Lord back to back to back. Some of the prophecies that I will be making are old ones that need to be made into video. They've been written down, dated maybe since 2016, written down since 2019 on the blog that is called themastersvoice.com or the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. And the URL for that is www.the-masters-voice.com. Dot com and it's always in the description box below you can also find everything about this channel below there is a spanish language channel that is called la voz del señor as well as the alternative channels that exist where you can follow this blog in case um you you want to have access to some of the content that can no longer be hosted here because of censorship from youtube and the reason that i recommend all this is because we are in times where it is necessary for you to be a good Berean. A good Berean is one who goes and checks the original source. A good Berean is one who does not choose to discern through his or her feelings or his or her, I like this, or I don't like that, or it doesn't sound like God, or I don't feel that this is true. Feelings have absolutely no power to stop the Lord's words. And since this is a place where the Lord's unadulterated words are coming through, it would be very helpful to those who find this channel, however you got here. Maybe you've had these videos on your phone for a long time and something has finally made you watch them. If you are not careful, I can promise you that pride, ego, spiritual blindness, and many, and just the general temperature of the world today can easily drive you from here. So if I have to be honest, this is a place for people who know what they're coming here for, and I don't think that I'm going to hold that back. This is a place for people who know what they're coming here for. Even if you are brand new and you don't know what you are coming here for, the Holy Spirit that is trying to protect you and protect your family knows why he brought you here. And so if you are going to be something that stumbles the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, it is unfortunate because the Lord has already told me that for many people who come here, this may be their last avenue, their last place of help, the last place that he's going to try and talk to them to wake them up or to turn them from the lifestyles that they may have been in for a very long time. And if you choose to push on, the choice is yours, but understand that choices have consequences in this life and we will all answer for them one way or another and so this is a prophecy received on April 15. I got two very long and detailed prophecies, and they go with a lot of scripture that the Lord was giving me just a few days after Bible study on the 16th. He will just say a place, and when you go to the place and start reading, your heart is just heavy because you are seeing in the scripture all the old confirmation of these words, these prophetic words are simply bringing layering to things that God promised from men that I never met, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, things written down about the United States that once God opens your eyes to them, you just will not be able to say it's not us. And so the title of this prophecy is an iron pen. And the main scripture that I will read here will be Jeremiah chapter 17. But first I will give this word going piece by piece. And if I'm able to remember the older prophecies that feed into it, I will give them. And 
hoping that the light will hold until I finish. So the Lord said to me, this was a vision. The Lord was speaking to me. This happened pretty soon after I woke up in the morning. This is the time that the Lord speaks to me very much as well as those final hours before it becomes morning when you're still in half sleep. But sometimes he will speak dead in the middle of the night and I can still wake up and remember the dream, record it, go back to sleep, or he will bring back all the details in the morning. The first thing God started saying to me is, America will be hit with rockets. America will be hit with rockets. And um, I've discussed already that America is going to be subject to a particularly devastating war with Russia and China that she's not going to win. And the Lord has said in the past that um, when you say war, war doesn't have to always be between evenly matched enemies. So he gave the example, um, which I found to be excellent, of the Iraq war and said that Iraq and America had a war. It was even called the Iraq war, but America carried out almost all the hostilities in that war. And there's no chance in this earth that America and Iraq are evenly matched, but it was still called a war and America carried the day occupied to that country. And we all know the history of that. And so the Lord says that what will happen between America, Russia, and China can also not be called a war. It is best termed an invasion because America will not be able to keep her feet with the speed and the stealth of the type of political onslaught, military onslaught that those two countries will bring here. And I discussed about one prophecy where I saw that President Trump was not going to keep the presidency. This was in 2019 and it is called 2020, I mean, and it is called Ezekiel 13. And what I saw in the backdrop of the president looking very tired and defeated and getting ready to step off one of several presidential podiums that the Lord put in front of me. So he was on his own and he was getting ready to step down from it. And I saw a vision, as it were, behind this man of what was coming for America in her future. And one of the things I saw was um, anarchy in this country. I saw civil unrest and civil disobedience and all kinds of things, looting, burning, protesting in the streets, um, running from, you know, altercations and things like that. And then I also saw that the buildings were being bombed from from outside. So this was not America bombing herself. This was incoming missiles hitting buildings that had already been bombed. So America will be hit with rockets. And in another prophecy, just a moment, please. So that first message where God says that America is going to be hit with external bombs was from 2019. And it is called Ezekiel 13 prophecy of a great fall. Another message that is also pretty recent is from March 29, 2023, and it is called Damascus shall be destroyed. And in that message, God was talking about the practice of carpet bombing and how it is a very careless approach to warfare because you will not do reconnaissance and look in the area and look on the map to see, do people live here? Is this mostly a residential area as opposed to maybe a naval shipyard or is this where they build munitions? Is this like a weapons factory? America will just fly over and just drop a payload of bombs in the whole area, basically exterminating everything in that area. And God then said in that prophecy, and I will just read briefly, Russia will carpet bomb American, American cities, leaving nothing behind but destroyed neighborhoods and silence. In its wake, no care will be taken, no reconnaissance done. They will not even bother to map the place and see who is living there. Russian planes will drop bombs over entire cities and there will be no warning or chance to escape. They will carpet bomb America just as America has done to other nations in the past. The Lord says that what America has done in the past will be revisited on her in the future. My word is sure, says the Lord. It is the hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. And so another thing that the Lord said in yet another prophecy was that the sound of air raid sirens would be heard in the United States. Air raid sirens is that thing, you know, at least I know of it from the Second World War, where when the country has spotted incoming bombers or something like that, then they put those sirens on to warn the citizens that 
planes are coming and there's nothing that we can do to stop the fact that the planes are about to come to this area and drop bombs. And so the siren is put on as a way for the nation to warn people in that area, go to the pre-designated bomb shelters, go to the places where you can keep safe. And so the Lord says that the sound of those sirens will be heard here in the USA. And I continue with this prophet prophecy. America will be burned from the rooftop to the foundation stones. I will burn this nation for her sins against me, and the fire she has kindled in my anger will not be put out. There will be nothing to remain of her in the end. And so when you hear this, you may be asking yourself, but this sounds extremely devastating and this sounds so harsh, and why would God do that? And all I can say to that is that there are hundreds of videos on this channel. And if you simply make use of them, for instance, if you have the stamina and the gall for it, and you simply go through the sin series and you watch those videos and you see the accusations of the sins that God brings against this nation. Some of them we know, same sex lifestyle that not only is proliferated here, but shared everywhere else. The abuse of minors, the murder of minors, murder, period. Um, wars that cause devastation outside, the abortion rate, how freely this has been carried everywhere else. There's some that people know, but there's some things that people strongly disavow. There's some things that people strongly deny, like the fact that the Lord revealed that snuff films are made here and that people are lured into what they think is an alternative movie career lifestyle. And then they are put to death on camera live while the camera is rolling, while specific wealthy people and other people who consume this type of material sometimes are viewing this remotely for enjoyment and pleasure and sexual gratification or just because their hearts are so darkened and wicked in fact throughout the types of prophecies that i have received from god having to see these things either in my dreams or visions what the lord has revealed is that sometimes it's possible to have so much money that you exhaust normal human pleasures. You've done all the shopping and you've done all the yachting and you've played all the golf and you've flown everywhere and there's nothing left to do now but what God calls blood sports. America has an endless amount of blood sports. In the prophecy, blood to drink, the Lord was showing me how much blood is spilled here, how much the blood of sexual immorality, the blood of rape, the blood that is shed in murder the blood that is shed in rituals and human sacrifices, how wealthy and other connoisseurs of human flesh do eat men, women, and especially children in this nation. And so if you are listening and you are blown away by these things and you are shocked and your first, second, and third response is to say, no, not us, the entire world has been listening for four years to America's sins being brought out in the open in God's own meticulous fashion because there is no way that one human being can get this much imaginary material and put it together in one place out of her own mind. These things are the knowledge of God and I have been forced to mature in them, forced to look at things that nobody's daughter should be looking at, forced to discuss things that have no business coming out of my mouth. And that means that America will be forced to listen to the indictment of sins against her and whether she protests and whether she refuses and whether she tries to use her two little hands to slap the words out of my mouth, the way that the Lord has shown me a blonde woman who is so feisty and who is so blind to where she is, that she tries to slap the face of a man, a very tall, large man who represents the Lord Jesus Christ. She reaches up her hands to try and slap this man in some visions that the Lord has shown me, but he grabs both of those hands in one hand. He has judged this woman and he will subdue this woman. And the reason the Lord says that America has kindled his anger into a fire that cannot now be put out is because there is such a thing as the cup of judgment. It is possible to sin until the cup that probably had a little drainage hole at the bottom so that as you fill the cup with sin, it keeps draining out God's mercy towards you. It is, it is possible 
for that little hole to be shut. And then the cup begins to fill against you. And when that cup of iniquity is full and starts to run over, the thing that it does is that the defilement within the cup flows to everybody around. And this is why gayness is spreading like a fever around the world because the iniquity of Babylon, it is not enough. Her gender confusion, her sons in dresses and her girls with no breasts, it is not enough. She must now get onto planes and go and shop this iniquity around and say, you have to join us in this and call it human rights because you all here don't know how to govern yourselves, but we've come to bring Transylvania to you. And other countries are saying, no, thank you. We don't want this. We're already trying to squash out the little seeds of it that TV and US media are starting to plant in our youth. We're already trying to fight that fire. So no, thank you. Keep the money and we will keep our clothes on. Babylon is a defiled cup. Her perversions now overflow. The Lord says that actually when you see the red, white, and blue thinking people, instead of just thinking that's the U S flag, thinking people should actually know that this flag covers a multitude of iniquity. Iniquity is a particular type of sin that is very hard to get rid of because it has been practiced so much that as he showed it to me, it is like a record with that little stick and it has been played so much that it has worn a groove in the plastic. America runs on iniquity and therefore her cup of judgment is full. And this is why the Lord says that the anger that is in him can no longer be assuaged. It can no longer be put out. There will be nothing to remain of America in the end. And because I have not covered this aspect in a long time, all I will mention is that in the earlier prophecies, those who have been here for a long time have always heard me say that the Lord says the end of America is that this nation will be broken. The shelf that she sits on which is not a far stretch since you've already heard that there will be water disasters on all sides of the countries and great of the country and great earthquakes and large portions of this nation in the middle and on the, on the west side and the east side will be submerged. New York is one of those that is going to suffer a judgment like that. And I said that when that tsunami comes to New York, it's not going to come and neatly pour on New York. It's going to hit Philly and it's going to hit Massachusetts and it's going to hit New Jersey and it's going to hit all the areas that are around her. So from all sides, America will be hit. But the final end I saw is that the shelf beneath the country broke and it sank to the bottom. And as I was watching that vision, the Lord says that the end, end, end of this nation, this is when all the wars have been fought. This is when all the captivities have been captive will be to sink to the bottom of the ocean and be no more. And he said that he will remove Babylon from before his sight forever. So that is why God's anger burns and cannot be put out. And so these things that I was seeing, they were being written down in what is usually my own notebook, but not by me. I saw a hand writing with an iron pen. That's the name of this prophecy, the iron pen. So I was simply watching the prophecies be written and then I would read what, what had been written. And so I said, oh Lord, what, what is to become of us who are living here? What, what will happen to us? I didn't actually say it in the vision. I said that. And then the pen wrote, you will be driven out to surrounding lands, to all the lands of the earth. You will be removed to the judgment to serve your enemies in foreign lands, you will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. You will be put to the sword. You will be judged by the Lord God Almighty, who judges fairly and perfectly in all things. And it is true that God says of himself in Psalm 9, at least, that he is the only wise judge. He judges the nations perfectly. So God is the only one who is able to sit in perfect judgment of the nations and say, you have done this and you have done this and the punishment for this 
and what the Lord punishment for this will be that and what God has said to America consistently is that he is the God who gives a whole judgment that means that he looks at all the crimes he looks at all the victims he looks at the length of time that the crimes have been committed against the victims he looks in the land to see if there are any who practice righteousness he looks into the leadership to see has the leadership investigated the crimes has the leadership over time because i know that people will immediately split in their minds into their parties and one party will say well it's the reds god is looking at the standard of american leadership over time has it gotten better? Has it at least maintained a facade of caring about what is good and righteous in the nation? Has it deteriorated? Is it salvageable? Or is it just going to be progressively worse until the end of time? What is to be done? So God will assess all factors and then he will render, as he says, a fair and a perfect judgment in all things. And the reason that there is so much strong pushback is because people are unable to stand before God's fair and, pub and perfect justice. They feel that if God were truly fair and truly perfect, he would list all the things that are on the America series and the sin series and still say, but still, I think I can unplug that little drainage and let maybe 15 or 25 years of the most recent sin go down. And then the cup will be half full and I will give you guys time to fill it again. He is not like that. The word that the Lord gave me in March is that the cup of the Amorites is full. The Amorites were a particularly wicked and sinful people, a real thorn in God's flesh. And so he judged them very harshly. And he said that the cup of the Amorites, AKA Babylon, AKA the United States of America is also full. And so though people want to insist that there should be some reconsideration and we're good people here and not everybody, the judgment is indeed everybody. Iniquity is upon the land. Just because you didn't have the abortion doesn't mean that you don't have prejudices in your heart. And then you say, well, you know, I, I don't think so. Just because you don't have prejudices in your heart don't mean you don't have an eye gate problem and you may not be on the internet looking at salacious material, but whoever walks by in front of you and your wife, your eyes linger just a little bit too long because you have not made a covenant with the eye gate. And so the whole land lies under the judgment. And this is something that the Lord is constantly bringing to me. Have they never heard of when judgment comes to the land? Why do they not read the word to come into a fuller understanding? In Ezekiel 9, when the judgment came to the land, did the judgment go around and say, well, you know, this class didn't do it? No, the judgment was simply between the righteous and the unrighteous. That was the only standard. That was the only measuring stick. And because it is wrought like that, because it's set up like that, the judgment is out of the hands of men. You can't be judged according to how you feel you should be judged. The only, the only power that you have over judgment is now. It's how you live. It's how you speak. It's what you choose to do with your free time. It's what you do when no one is watching you. That is the only way you affect judgment with what you do now. And then later when judgment comes, you will find out how you did according to the perfect, wise, and fair judgment of God. And so the pen said, that some will be driven out to surrounding lands, to all the lands of the earth. And there are live prophecies to that effect. Those with the citizen children, if you are wise, for these are things that I already started to speak to people about in 2015, long before I appeared here, that if you give birth to a child here in the United States and you're just sitting pretty and you don't begin to investigate what that child needs to be able to cross borders, then I hope you're going to cross the border in a canoe or a hot air balloon because these people, weaponized, dressed up military people with the full rights of the state to arrest, detain, and maybe even take life, they will be at every exit and entry point and you're not crossing out if you are a citizen and you do not have alternative papers from your country of origin. 
And that is one of the ways that people will be driven out to surrounding lands. I've said in previous prophecies that some people will go at their own request. They will. I saw visions where people were asking, Americans were asking their own children. It wasn't only people, foreigners who decided, you know what, I'm going to leave. God has long been talking about the exodus of foreigners, that they will sniff the changes in the wind very early and start to quit these high paying jobs and change all their assets into asset things and take with them whatever they can take with them. And then there are other people who will linger and then the times and the pressures will be that you will end up fleeing like that other video I saw where people were just throwing the gold and the silver into SUVs and children documents and they were headed not for the airports, they were headed for the land borders because the government had passed a law that made quite a bit of private property illegal. You couldn't hold it anymore. You couldn't have it anymore. And so people obviously couldn't run with houses. They couldn't run with golf clubs. They ran with small paperwork and they ran with gold and whatever else they had. They ran with what, what money they had and they fled for the borders with their families or by themselves as retirees. That's one way that people will flee into surrounding lands. I have spoken about how the Lord said that in the times to come, in the years to come, South America will not be brown anymore. It will be white because Americans in their millions are going to flee and resettle in those lands. There is another prophecy that if I have time, I will make it, but probably not today. It's called diaspora. And in that prophecy, the Lord was saying that Americans are going to go to the most unheard of destinations. And the Lord was saying that Americans are going to go to Papua New Guinea. He said, Celestial, Americans are going to go to places that if you are looking at holiday destinations and you are looking at retirement spots for them, they would never pick that a hundred out of a hundred. And so he was, he was listing places that Traditionally, you would not even think it, especially in the future times of political tensions and things, you would not even think it's safe for an American to move there. I saw them in Constantinople. I saw them in Istanbul. I saw them in Beirut. And it was a very different type of American that was there. No longer boisterous, no longer noisy, no longer demanding, no longer touristy, very quiet, very humble doing their absolute best to be polite to everyone and assimilate because the times were bitterly different against this nation. And people who had managed to flee with their life and at least some type of funds had learned a very core and pivotal lesson that when God says he will humble you, God will seriously humble you. And so just a moment, please. That is part of what it means to be driven to surrounding lands, to all the lands of the earth. Um, I have shared that it is not only to Canada and to South America, that Americans will run all the way to Africa and they will even go as far as Asian countries, some people. And then the pen said that you will be removed in judgment to serve your enemies in foreign lands. And I have spoken many times about the captivity by ship that will come here. All you have to do is go back to some of the old videos. One of them is called Send for Their Flesh. There's part one, two, and three of that on the blog, The Master's Voice. Send for Their Flesh, a vision in which I saw Ukraine, Taiwan, China, Russia, and other post-Soviet allies. Many countries gathered in a room at a meeting at which America was not invited. America will not be invited to a lot of things. There will be so many meetings that will be taking place geopolitically, and this country will have no clue that they are taking place. And those meetings are going to be about cooperation. Those meetings are going to be about weapons because the wars of the future are going to be fought by things that I personally do not understand. Guns that have fire, guns that shoot fire. Nobody has fought wars with fire guns before because everybody knows what fire does to flesh. The wars of the future, God called it inhumane wars, and they're going to be man's inhumanity to man. And so it's guns with fire. It is Russian ships that sit like this. 
and then you press the button for the the ship or the plane to, thing to come on and then it goes like that so it's on the ground and then you press something and it's flat and round just like a skipping stone and then it goes and then it just sits there like this so this is the ground and then this is the thing just hovering and the Lord was showing me that Russia keeps these things inside the mountains so that American flyovers and spy things cannot see those things in the normal airplane hangars. Those things are inside the mountains. Russia has hollow mountains that the Jeep can drive into. And then the whole mountain's tummy has been carved out and they have planes in there and other weapons. And the thing that goes up like this, and then it just balances without needing to fly or without falling down, something like that. So um, in Send for Their Flesh, they were in a meeting and all the nations were talking. And, you know, some of the nations were just happy to be in the room, smaller countries. But, you know, the big nations, especially China, was compl complaining and saying that we need land to, to grow stuff and to support our people. We have such a large population and we need workers. And some people were saying we need this and we, not, and we need that. And Mr. Putin was sitting in that meeting and he was quiet and he was listening to everyone complaining and griping and asking questions that it seemed they couldn't figure out. And then he just had an outburst and he said, send for their flesh like that. And when he said that, everyone was like, well, why didn't we think of that? obviously let's get them and make them work for us and that them was the nation of the united states that them that china has built those empty cities that the wall street journal was mocking in 2014 and 2015 and saying china clearly has no plan for the future china has built enormous ghost cities that are just sitting there such a massive waste of infrastructure a massive waste of this those cities are dormitory cities and you only need dormitories especially in china for workers and so you will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. You will be put to the sword. I have already discussed at length the amount of loss of life that will take place once these people come here. I have already discussed at length the amount of loss of life that will happen when America fights herself in a civil war. The Lord brought in the live prophecy that America will have a brutal civil war, and that is part of why the foreigners will flee. They will feel that they did not come here to die. They came to participate in the American dream, but once it becomes a nightmare, these people are going to run away, helter-skelter. Um, before that, the Lord also mentioned that there would be incredible brain drain people, skilled people in all sectors. And he was showing me how many Africans actually come here. People from Africa, people from the Philippines, and Vietnam and um, one other Asian nation, it might be Korea, but people come here from around the world and they plug their skills into how, uh, the, medical, the medical field, the medical industry. They really, really congregate there. And God was showing me that people will just disconnect and go. He also was showing me how wealthy Mexican Americans actually are especially those who have been here generationally, how much wealth they have amassed. The Lord said that America is going to feel the pinch when large groups of immigrants suddenly uproot, take everything that they have and go. Their skills, their availability, their labor, their time. And he said that America will feel for the first time, especially in the case of Mexico, how much work Mexicans do for this country that is not appreciated. They do the hard jobs. They do the dirty jobs. They do the work that even lazy people who don't invest time in education and bettering their skills don't want to do, they leave that to these people in the society, but these people decided that, you know what, Mexico is not so bad and they will also uproot and go back home. And maybe it is a good thing because in the prophecy, Isaiah 13, Russia conquest and war, I saw that when America starts to climb her own gates, her own walls, her own borders, it was these same Mexicans that get no respect here now that were waiting on the other side of the wall for them with food, 
with comfort, with open homes, with these trucks that can hold about 20 people in the back, you know, just the open back ones and the covered ones. It was the Mexicans that was were waiting on the other side of the wall to carry shell-shocked, weeping, destroyed people into the city for money and sometimes into the city for free and drop them off at their grandmother's houses, their sisters' and their brothers' houses, to wear Mexican people's clothes, eat Mexican people food, and receive comfort from Mexican people. So these are the things that the Lord has been showing me for quite a number of years. Describing Babylon's diaspora, Babylon's fleeing, Babylon's scattering, and this is what it sounds like in modern terms. It's not written in the Bible. It was written in the Bible a certain way, and God is opening it up for his people to have understanding of the times and to know what they ought to do, like the men of the tribe of Issachar, to pray and fast, to overcome this constant ongoing rhetoric of it's not true because woe unto you when the day comes that it is true and you truly sat there like a king or a queen, rejecting it with your mouth, forgetting that the human tongue cannot undo ancient words that are now being spoken by a modern mouth. You will be put to the sword. This is loss of life. You will be judged by the Lord God Almighty, the fair and perfect judge. The next thing that the pen wrote was American will be like a pelican on the roof, abandoned, isolated, and alone. Her allies, like Germany and France, will all abandon her due to a breakdown in diplomatic relations. Those countries will pursue their own interest in the years to come, and the cohesiveness and single-minded purpose of NATO and other Western alliances like the G7 and even the UN Security Council will break down. Russia will laugh because it sees which way the wind is blowing and it will take advantage of the times to consolidate power. America will become increasingly isolated in the last days and also increasingly shrill. Shrill means to have a very sharp and annoying and irritating voice that only women are capable of. She will make demands and threats very frequently because of the isolation, because the nations are not listening to her, and because her proposals are being rejected. Russia will use this decline in power and influence to its advantage to make tactical moves and to make power alliances that further increase American isolation. It will be very hard to find a neutral state in the years ahead. So I'm watching the pen writing all this down in what is normally my prophecy notebook. And the first thing I will mention here is that this thing about a pelican on a roof, this phrase was coined by David, the prophet king. And David was speaking about how because of how King Saul really destroyed David's name. Uh, David had such a wonderful start. He was taken from the fields and, you know, he went to serve his brother's food. Saul Goliath and the power of the Lord came on that young man and his heart was so zealous for the Lord his God that he rose up in the anointing and spirit of a true warrior that he was born to be slayed Goliath, cut his head off, and forever won himself in that single moment, by that single act of bravery, a place in the hearts of not only the Israel army, but a place in the heart of King Saul and a place in the heart of the whole nation. David was an overnight phenomenon because he was a man who carried the solution of God to the right place at the right time and executed it in a way that only Israelites could truly respect bold fearlessness that was not afraid to step up when necessary. He catapulted to the top and he was intensely loyal because David's heart was governed by love for God, not love for people. This is why God always forgave David because David was not like Saul. Saul was like a little thing, a pendulum that swung because he truly tried to curry favor with wherever he thought he would get the public vote. And he cared very much about his likes, his clicks, and his subscribers. And God despised him 
because he was never able to fully obey God. He always went three quarters of the way, halfway, three fifths of the way, and he could never go all the way because he did not love and prefer God above people. David loved God at all costs. And so when David's reputation was suffering because King Saul was going from territory to territory, spreading the story that David was in mutiny, that David had stolen this and stolen that and tried to steal the kingdom, David was frustrated because in that day there was no social media. And so David could not simply start a YouTube live and clear his name. His name was being destroyed. His reputation that he had worked so hard for, a legit reputation rooted in love and loyalty to God and then to king and then to country was being ruined and David was suffering the outcome and that outcome was political isolation. David became a pariah. America, I'm speaking by the spirit of the Lord because none of this was prepared. It is not written down and will not appear when I write this prophecy down on the blog. David was suffering political isolation caused by someone else's wickedness. And he said to God, I am like a pelican on a roof. This is a poetic picture of an already ugly bird sitting on a rooftop, abandoned by other birds. He didn't say I am like a dove in, in the fertile branches of an olive tree. A dove sitting in a flowering of olive tree is a very beautiful picture. A pelican is an ugly looking little thing created by our heavenly father who certainly has a sense of humor in how he designs some of these animals. It is strange looking. It is not immediately something we want to embrace and say, how cute. And then David says it's sitting on the rooftop. This bird, I don't know if it flies or not, but the picture of it sitting there with that huge gulping beak sitting on the roof is not as cute as an olive branchy dove. And so he was saying, Saul's lies have made me ugly. Saul's lies have made me unattractive. Saul's lies have driven away from me the love of the people, God, that I won fair and square in battle, bravery, risking my life time and time again for a nation and a king that I hold so dear that no matter how many times he attacks me, I still refuse to kill him even when the opportunity is near. And so he was lamenting and saying that he was lonely, abandoned, and cut out of the ebb and flow of life. And God says the United States will be like that, ugly, unwanted, isolation, isolated, trying to talk and everyone is like, shh, 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 shh. G is about to make a speech and everyone will tune YouTube there to watch Russia State TV with subtitles and things like that. There will be a pivot. This is what God in heaven is saying. And so isolation, loneliness, abandoned. And then he says that allies, traditional allies will begin to abandon their posts. So they will no longer, this will no longer be the era of Mr. Tony Blair, who for all his career acted like he didn't have an independent bone in his body. This will be an era where traditional allies will begin to break away to pursue their own national interests. And I've always spoken since last year of when India decided that India needed goods and India was going to go with Russia sanctions or not because they needed, I think it was oil or gas or something. And the White House Secretary Jen Psaki was like, well, India can do what India wants to do, but India should decide where India wants to be uh, on the right side of history. And India was like, we will be on the right side of coal and gas. Thank you very much. And they didn't care. And now you see France starting to bark back and say things like being an ally doesn't make us a vassal. A vassal is a slave or a servant of a higher nation. So he says that traditional allies will abandon America because diplomatic relations between them will break down. This is failure to see eye to eye when they gather at the wine and cheese conventions. This is failure of the ambassadors to be chummy and smoothy anymore. This is cold shouldering in the room and unable to break the ice in diplomatic relations. 
which leads to pettiness when it comes time to form strategy. And when you're petty, when it comes to strategy, trade, industry, and war, it never works out well because it's only cohesive strategy that advances geopolitical goals. And so countries pursuing single-minded interest will hurt NATO. And I said this in old prophecies. I said that the amount of trust that the world at large puts in NATO as a peacekeeping body, it frightens me. It frightens me because it's like trusting in a blind and crippled person who doesn't look blind and crippled and you think that this person is going to leap to your defense like Thor when you need him and he's not going to because you don't know that in the future he will be disabled, petty with factions and cliques inside him. One of the things, the factions and cliques that the Lord spoke of is that President Erdogan is not a fan of the people that he is connected to. Obviously, he goes to the wine and cheese meetings because he's part of the EU. Turkey is a part of the EU. But God says that Turkey actually has a Russia-colored heart, as well as several of those other little Eastern European countries that used to be part of the Soviet Union and now are part of NATO. The Lord said not celestial, that the reason Vladimir Putin has never been bothered because they won't let him into NATO is because he knows what goes on in the NATO meetings anyway, because there are people who tell him. So he's not missing out on anything. He's fully updated. He's not worried about anything. He gets to see all the meetings, all the notes, and know what the movements are and adjust himself properly. And to those who read the Bible, I'm sure you remember the story of when the prophet of Israel constantly used to tell the Israelite king, oh, your enemies are going to be on the hill today. And then Israel would be on the hill, surprise them and kill them. And then they would say, no, no, no. Okay, we're going to ambush them from the valley. And then the prophet will say, today they're going to be in the valley of so-and-so. And then Israel would go there and thrash them. And then eventually the king said to his men, who's the mole? Who's giving away the secret plans? And then one of the men said, it is the prophet that is in Israel who, is, who dreams upon his bed, whom the Lord speaks to and places that man as if he is in the council of the secret meetings. So it is like when you are holding your battle strategy, king, it is like that prophet is standing here listening to us and then reports to his king what we are going to do. So this is not a natural mole situation. This is a spiritual update situation that is happening. And there's nothing we can do unless we go and capture that man. So that is what is going to happen. Mr. Putin already has knowledge. And in one of the very old prophecies, I will just add it here because I never made a video for it. Didn't see the reason to at the time. God showed me how Mr. Putin works. God showed, showed me how Mr. Putin thinks. Mr. Putin is a meticulous thinker. His mind looks like an iron grid. At least that's what it looked like to me. It also looked like 24 layer chess. So he makes a move and then he thinks his opponent move and then he thinks how he will reply. And that's a layer. And then he makes the same move, but the opponent moves a different way. So he will move a different way. And that's the second layer. And he thinks like that. The Lord showed me that this man is a very strong nationalist. He is very burned on the inside for Russian pride. All the things that have been said against Russia. You can look at me and think, well, she seems whatever. I am zealous for my God. I'm extremely pricked for the honor of my God. I'm extremely pricked that in this modern age, we really don't think that God knows more than CNN. It is such an embarrassment. No matter what country you live in, if you think like that, the shame is not upon me who speaks for my father. It is upon you who thinks that Al Jazeera and CNN know more than the God who formed the people who work at those news agencies. I am zealous that the, the might and the skill of my father be put on display against men who think that their news channels know more than my father. President Putin is a strategist. He likes to play chess even against himself. He has no problem playing one man chess. 
playing the red side against the black side and alternating between the two sides of the board. And when he changes one side, he will play for that side as if he's not going back to play on the other side against himself. He collects maps. The Lord showed me that this man is an avid collector of old maps. So he's not concerned with what the world looks like now. He likes to see how the territories of the world were divided before international law became very strong and you couldn't conquer anymore. That's right. Nationalists are very interested in territory. And as Americans, we should know that because our second job on the weekend is stealing everybody else's stuff and conquering without calling it conquering. We call American conquering freedom. That's how we call it. We're just gonna go free everybody. And the problem is that after we free people, they don't look so free. They look oppressed, broke, and mostly dead. But over here, we write it down in the history books as freedom. We freed Iraq and Yemen and Kuwait and quite a few other places that needed US freedom. This man collects old maps and he pours over what territory looked like. He looks over how Bismarck expanded Prussia and how Great Britain went and just sailed everywhere and took everything that did not belong to them. He's also interested in what Russia used to look like a long time ago when they had SARS. He has a Tsarist mentality, a dominating mentality. He is interested in territory and the expansion of power and the Lord will allow him in the last days for a very long time to spread across Europe, I said, like a blood stain. France, you will go down to this man. He will occupy you. Same with Germany. Europe will, please give me the word, cooperate. Thank you. Europe will cooperate, whereas Russia is not interested in cooperating with America. Many European countries, the Lord said, because their leaders are wise and because they will see what this man will do to America and how he will be gobbling up territory, absorbing other nations into Russia. They will cooperate. They will become cooperating bodies. Some he will just annex and others will cooperate for the sake of their populations to protect their people. They will become cooperators. And America will not get any help from Germany and France, even before he militarizes against them, because they will, they will become estranged. This is the kind of man that he is. He looks at the old maps and he dreams of the days of Peter the Great and friends. When Russia had great power, great authority, and they didn't used to stand in the bread lines. Those are the days he wants to go back to. And for a while, God will allow him. So God says, Security Council, cooperation, NATO, Western alliances, G7, breaking down. And God says that when Russia starts to see which way the wind is blowing, she's going to laugh. And she's going to take advantage of the isolation of America to consolidate her power. And I said in the old videos that I saw this man, there will come a time when this man, in fact, he's already doing it now, where I said he would get on planes and begin to fly there and fly there. And he has a very different style, a very different style and approach from the United States, whereby the United States comes and says, well, we've brought money and we want this. You take money to people's country and then you begin to play cash chess. This man is going to approach for cooperation. He is going to approach respectfully. And I saw that many people liked his method of approach and they were open to discussion and talks. And I saw, and it's written down in that prophecy, I might make it after all, even though the bulk of it has already come out now. I saw that because of his approach, even where he offended people, they did not stay angry for long. They did not hold malice the way they hold malice against U.S. diplomats and U.S. foreign policy. And so he will use things to his advantage to consolidate power. And in fact, I'm going to share here. Uh, yesterday, a subscriber shared a video with me, and I may leave that video in the link, but I'm just going to warn, especially if you're older, that um, the music alone on that thing 
can trigger anxiety in a person. But basically what seems to have happened, I don't know if this was a long time ago, but it doesn't look so, is that over there in Beijing, China and Russia are meeting each other and putting gold medals and gold necklaces on one another in front of huge rooms of people who then leapt to their feet and began clapping as if Sherman Mao had come back from the dead. If this is not cooperation, then I don't know what is. These things are fulfilling. I wrote them down faithfully to honor my God that he said, go forth and bring this word to them that they will know what the times will contain in the future. And this is what God says. So America is going to become increasingly isolated and become shrill. When you become shrill, you can see it, it's, it's basically mothers. You tell the children once and they think this woman is a joke. And you tell them twice and they laugh and do things more. And then you tell them three th times and you even say, I'll tell your father. And then they think, go ahead, lady. And they continue and continue until the mother's voice begins to have this desperate tone, this frustrated tone, until she finally screams or really yells. God says America will start to be like that, raising her voice, putting on the pressure, using threats, using threats and making demands frequently because she can feel her isolation. The nations will not be listening to her. Her proposals will be rejected. And in the midst of all this, Russia climbing up on the ruins, the crumbling ruins of America's supremacy and taking it to its advantage to their advantage to make tactical moves. Those are strategist moves and power alliances. This is lining up all the big dogs in your corner for once. No longer the axis of evil, but the axis of making use of the times. That will increase America's isolation. And God says in the last days, in the years ahead, it will be very hard to find a state that is neutral on these issues. The next thing that was written is America will be rejected. After the pen wrote this one sentence with the word rejected in large letters, I saw that the White House was, was bathed at night in, there's these lamps. I'm sure we know them. There's these lamps that you can put on a building and you can project an image on the building. So sometimes you can project, I don't know, you know, Independence Day, and then you put the White House in red, white, and blue, and then the whole building is red, white, and blue like that. Or you can project different images on buildings. And the image that was projected on the White House was rainbows. It was rainbow colors. It's all the, the pride flag colors. And so the, the White House was sitting on the lawn and it had the rainbow motif projected on it. And then the vision that I saw turned from nighttime to daytime and from the top of the White House as if hands were up there, massive hands were at the top of the White House. Some, someone pushed and a huge rainbow flag <sighs> fell down the entire face of the White House. So they didn't put the flag maybe at the sides so you can see the majestic entrance and all that. No, right from the top of the White House covering almost the whole front of it, a massive rainbow flag was pushed by hands and it fell. Um, and then I saw the words LGBTQ rules became the governing motif of the United States. LGBTQ rules became the governing temperature of the United States. And yet what the hand has wrote, written was because of this stance, because of, of LGBTQ being the hill that America chooses to die on, that America says, no, this is how we're going out. We're going out fighting on this. It, it became rejected and also by God. You cannot adopt anything outside of God's natural order and creation, expect him to bless you. And so it became the governing motif of America. And I saw that this lifestyle and this thing that people are currently, no, let's push back and roll back and, and do everything. I saw that it was everywhere and it became mandatory in America and a law not to speak against, discriminate against, push back against, make comments against this lifestyle. Please listen. 
because I've said in a prophecy somewhere when I was speaking just by the anointing and the spirit of God like this, that America will be forced to be gay. I said that God said to me that the future that is coming, not only for this nation, but that will be propagated in the beast system is that it will be very hard for a man and a woman to tell each other, I love you. I love you too. Let's get married. They will be mocked to the ends of the earth. They will be told that is so 1904. Are you still a man interested in only women? What do women have? Are you a woman who still wants to be a man? Come over to the better side. Homosexuality will be as almost a stench in the spirit. And I think I will go back and find this old um, prophecy that the Lord gave me about the power of the rainbow and the spirits who are behind it. That is a prophecy from last year, I think. It's in my notes somewhere. I may make it a video. It will be everywhere in the United States. It will be everywhere in the beast system. This, this going with your own kind and this being a man and saying that your name is Susie Q. And it will be mandatory and it will be a law not to discriminate against them. So here are the things God says. You are not to refuse service to LGBTQ. You are not to refuse them any form of assistance. You will not be allowed to rely on religious grounds or any other grounds to say no, to give them service or any form of assistance in which they stand in need. They will be given rights of association. This means that they can go anywhere. Please listen to the all-female tennis locker room. If Susie Q, the six foot nine man, wants to come in there and strip down naked the way Will Thomas, the man who calls himself Leah, did and showed himself to all those young female swimming athletes at that school, he will have what is called rights of association. They will be allowed to go wherever they want. There is no such thing as female locker room and male locker room or a female knitting club or female bingo or female anything. They will be given the rights of assimilation. Please listen. They will have to be accepted into anything they want to be a part of. And the examples that I saw was the local grandmother's sewing circle or a women's gym. So if a man chooses to have his trans crisis at age 70 and wants to come to the to the women's bingo where those old ladies have been peacefully gossiping about their husbands for the last 20 years if he wants to come and sit with them and make them all uncomfortable and awkward and they cannot discuss their menopause in peace they will not be able to tell him no they will not be able to dissolve the grandmother's sewing circle and go and start meeting at aunt lottie's house behind his back he it is discrimination and you can see that I already spoke of, spoke of rights that they will have, that it is a law not to discriminate. So you guys will not be able to disband and go and do something else. The another place that the Lord was showing me was women's gym, and I just spoke about it. There will be no sanctity of locker rooms. If they want to come in, they will come in. It will not be allowed to tell them, you can't have this counseling job because the counselor that we're looking for is to counsel young male survivors of sexual abuse. And these young men will have to explain the type of sex abuse that happened to them to a safe and a trusted adult. So you won't be able to have this job because you're actually a woman saying that you're a trans man, but you're not. You will not be able to say that. If the woman wants to come and the boys have to talk to her about what sodomy was done to them or who molested them and they're not comfortable, you can't tell that trans person that you are not fit for the job of being the girl's swim coach. If he or she applies and proves that he has been swimming for 20 years in Lake Tennessee or wherever, you cannot say no to that person. Says if the trans person or even someone from the homosexual lifestyle, maybe with proclivities or without, applies for the job and is denied for any reason remotely related to what they are, meaning their sexual stuff. If it is even sniffed on the wind 
that that is the reason you have told these people no, that denial will immediately trigger the law. It will run afoul of the law and it is going to end up in those days as a very different result from the current lawsuits and past lawsuits that we've seen. So now if two people are together and they go into the Christian bakery and they say they want a cake and the Christian person says, you know, I, I don't mean to cause anything, but I cannot do that based on religious reasons. And then people fight and then they go to, to court. And so far the courts have been saying religious freedom is upheld in the time that is coming in this country. Nothing like that is going to happen. You are going to solidly and soundly lose. You're going to be out of pocket. You're going to pay your lawyer, their lawyer, all the lawyers. You will lose. God says it will be a very different platform. And for this reason, because this trans transformation of America was overflowing and LGBTQ became such a powerful movement. Not only did the hand right reject it for America, but I saw a big stamp come from heaven with the red letters rejected and it stamped rejected across the face of the white house. And from that moment, America began to be totally overlooked and ignored by God. I do not need to open up what it means to be ignored by God, but I do a thorough job. God ignoring you means, like he said, he will not teach your children anymore. He will not save your children anymore. Your children can get into whatever shenanigans they want. The angels will stand down. And if they go swimming in the lake without supervision, if it's five of them, 20 of them, they will all go downstream. And unfortunately, we will just have to look for the ones we can find and have the funerals. God will no longer protect God will no longer look out for. Heaven will turn its face. This is the rain. This is the crops. This is the agriculture. This is the friendship of other nations. This is even peace within the borders. Black not hating white, male not hating female, straight not hating gay. All of that, it will fly completely over God's radar. He literally will not care because of this one sin that this country is willing to die on. This is the hill America chooses to die on rather than pursue righteousness according to the laws of God. And so the next thing the hand wrote was, America will be hopeless and helpless. After I saw this sentence, I saw a staggering sight. I saw many, many, and I wrote in parenthesis, too many people that were standing and laying and lurching through the streets of America. These people literally looked like the walking dead. They were in terrible shape, filthy clothes, terrible stench. And almost all of them had one or both hands curled up in front of them like when someone has a stroke. Most of them were not moving. They were just frozen in poses with the head up, staring at something or completely hanging down and most of them uh, had the mouth open, some were drooling, staring at nothing, and skin and bones, the majority of them. Quite a few of them, quite a large number, were covered with terrible sores. They were dying, and these people were literally eaten alive by drugs. America, we have not seen what this drug epidemic will truly look like. It may be causing people to be shocked, but what, hap what happens in that famous part of California and that famous part of Philly and that famous part of Portland, but we do not really know what wave of emaciation and almost like leprous sores and, and, and paralysis and total mental schisms and psychosis is on the way because of drugs basically eating up the population. And then as I watched, the hand wrote in the notebook and said, this will be the payment for their sorceries because they refused to honor me with their bodies. I gave them over to their lusts, to pharmacaea, to the desires of their flesh, and by it, America will be destroyed. Sons and daughters will die because of an onslaught of drugs in the population. And this will be the penalty of those who sin with sorcery. 
those who use the temple of God to practice a form of witchcraft, to sin with their lusts against me. And so this is what the hand wrote in the notebook, that the horrible army of people that I saw taken over by drugs, paralyzed, sick, lurching, lying down on the streets, standing, some of them just frozen into poses, is payment for sorceries. A nation that is smoking and using the jewel and um, addicted to weed and baking it into cakes and introducing psychedelics and the use of mushrooms and mothers buying microdoses to cope with their children or people just taking a little bit of something and all half the youth unable to cope because they started using Adderall in college to, to, to seem bright and to seem engaging. And now guess what? Th that dr those druggy youth are now the, the druggy people working in the companies, um, still taking the Adderall and still taking the little fixes that they started with as 13 and 14 year olds in, in high school. And now they've grown up and they're going to be the parents of the new generation. This is if they even want children. And these monkeys are on their back. And I already discussed in many videos what happens to a nation that opens the door to drugs. You open the door to drug use. You open the door even to very strong opiates. Maybe you broke your leg. They put you on something powerful. You needed it for two or three months. The leg starts healing. But every time there's a little twinge like, oh, doctor, I need a refill. You're 10 years in now and you're still on that thing. For your own sake, you should come off it. For your own sake, you should do what you need to do. Because God says that those who refuse to honor him with the bodies that he gave them, he will hand them over to the pharmacia that they lust for. And by the desires of the flesh, America will be destroyed. A nation that loves drugs, you will absolutely be infiltrated by passengers, which is the name I have for demonic entities, spirits, demons, devils, the unclean spirits that have roamed this earth for centuries that love to enter bodies. In Jesus' day, they went and filled that man in the Gadarenes until he was stark naked, cutting himself with stones, which is a sign of how much demons hate this pure temple. Cutting what God made with stones and screaming and crying out which is the signature move of madness. I already taught in the video, who owns the house? That man was not in his right mind. And when his eyes saw Jesus, that man was literally not at home. He was fully suppressed. He was fully suppressed by the demons that filled him. It was the demons who recognized Jesus because they shouted out and said, what have we to do with you, son of God? This is not the greeting of that man. Most people didn't recognize Jesus when they saw him in the flesh. No one would have hailed him right away as the son of God. They recognized the Lord and they said, what have you come to do? It is not yet time, meaning it's way too early for judgment. This is not what God said. And he said to them to come out of the man because Jesus very much cares about the state of the temple. Why? Because he's jealous for the temple. This is our God's home. He's supposed to live in here by his spirit. And so I saw that a drug epidemic is coming because people are experimenting with drugs even now, even people who don't have a need of it. It's very much an entertainment culture, part of America, get high and then watch movies, get high and then go out to eat something. So, God says that using your body in this way is sorcery. It's a form of witchcraft. It is sin. The next thing the hand wrote was, America will be homeless. And when it wrote that, I saw a great housing crisis in the United States. God has told me recently that the housing crisis, my daughter, that is on the way will be greater than what rose in the aftermath of 2008. And that was pretty, pretty bad. Homes became unaffordable, as I saw in the vision. I mean that you could work and work and work and work. And with inflation and other things that were going on, the house 
would consistently move like a mirage out of your hand. And I also saw that banks would not stake anyone who was less than perfect for a house loan. The banks had so many rigorous hoops to jump through that you basically had to be perfect on paper before they made you a house loan. And I also saw that people could no longer afford their mortgages and they lost the house. The house was taken away from them by forfeit and they had to go and live somewhere else. So I was watching as people fell behind in the mortgage and in the prophecy that is called America will be like Zimbabwe, the Lord said that many people will take their lives. I'm cautioning you not to do this. There is nothing so bad that you need to condemn your soul by taking your life. Suicide is assuming authority over a body that you do not own. You are a steward of this body. You did not bring yourself into this world. You do not have any right to take yourself out. God said that when economic downturn hits this country, people took their lives when their mortgages and other bills and financial responsibilities began to spiral right out of their control, right out of their ability to cope with what is going on or what was going on or what will be going on in that time. And so I saw someone, they lost their house, they couldn't afford the mortgage and the house was taken away from them by the bank and they had to go live someplace else. So I saw the U-Haul and the family was putting the last of their things and they drove away from a very lovely house, but God did not allow me to see where they went. So I didn't see where they went to live. And then the next thing I saw was that America will have an epidemic of trailer parks. He says that trailer parks will increase in all the cities. So this is not just the known cities like Cali and things like that. These trailer parks, these unauthorized homesteads where people just basically, they have to live somewhere. They will increase in all the cities. He said, even in major cities where they are not supposed to be. And then the hand was writing. This is the breakdown of America. America will break down with no dependable water and power services, no mailbox services, and no medical services. Eventually, it will be a shell of its former self, and this is the judgment of the Lord. So if you can see, this is a longer than usual video. I have covered an incredible amount of material. This is all from the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord writing out the judgments. And so before I go into this breakdown of America part, I would simply, excuse me, I would simply like to point out to people what I have been saying about being wise enough to know and to understand prophetic timing. If you are out of sync and out of step with prophetic timing, the person who will suffer is you. The person who will suffer is not me. And the person who will suffer is not those who take heed to what I'm saying. The person who will suffer is the person who will listen to this meticulous breakdown of issues to do with foreign policy, internal policy, um, drugs, society, housing, all the things that God is saying, and then say, but this is the wrath of God and we are not appointed to wrath. This is not the wrath of God. This is simply God laying out America getting exactly what she sold. Getting what you sow is not the wrath of God. Getting what you sow is spiritual justice. And the Bible already said that in Galatians to those who read their Bibles. They don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. This means that you may take actions such as transing your children to mock God but God is not the one who is mocked when your child cuts her uterus out and robs you of grandchildren forever. He, he is not mocked by that. God will comfort his heart with those of his children who keep their breasts and their uteruses in place and bring forth little ones to glorify him. Those who continue to join man and woman hand in hand as the godly team, the only team that is sanctioned by Team Heaven, and then they continue to exercise dominion over the earth and to be fruitful and multiply. God will not be mocked because God will always have his children, his obedient seed, his children who love him so much that even though they're scared about what the future is, 
they want to come close and they want to cuddle up to him anyway. And he is able to comfort you in the midst of one hour of things that you wish you had not lived long enough to hear. But those who will remain ignorant of the time and think that me just basically telling America, you sowed wild oats and now I have been sent with a massive truck that has the little dumping bit to dump the wild oats directly in your driveway. If you think that is wrath, then you are out of sync because wrath is in Matthew 24. And that's not even wrath. That's just Jesus telling us, here are the other things you will have to walk through. Wrath is really towards those shocking chapters in the book of Revelation. So if you're thinking that you're going to heaven before these basic things, even an unsaved person might look at you and wonder what your thought process is like, because even an unsaved person knows that if a, a culture increases in sexual immorality, eventually you won't get any babies born, and eventually you're going to have a declining and an aging population. Even the people in Europe who aren't that all that Christian don't need to think of Maranatha to know that two plus two will always equal four and not 44. So if you are listening to these things as a Christian and you're thinking this is wrath and you're thinking this is the tribulation and I haven't said a word about Nephilim in this prophecy, then you are out of sync. You are out of time. You are out of location. You are out of all reasonableness. You are just deceived and confused because someone else is pumping something into your car and your car is stalling. And that's what happens when you put sugar and sawdust into an engine and not good, clean gas that can get you from point A to point B. God said that it will be a slow and steady slide to the bottom and we will hit every pothole conceivable on the way there. And this is what that sounds like carefully put out for you. So this is the breakdown of America. America will break down with no dependable water and power services. God says that America will be like Zimbabwe. So if Zimbabwe is listening right now, if any country that's beginning to experience um, regular power cuts and, you know, uh, you know, the lights are on for a certain amount of time and then they're off for a certain amount of time. These things are always the start of a declining society. Ask anyone who ever grew up with light a part of the time and then having to use candles and lanterns a part of the time. That is what they do in Zimbabwe now. They will tell you that the minute the lights start to come and go and the water starts to come and go and you need to start thinking about buying water outside and bringing big drums of stuff to the house, the minute you start that, you should already know that these are signs of decline. No dependable water and power, no mailbox services. So this is basically talking about government services that we all depend on, like the post, like couriers, like food delivery. Most people only got through COVID because they were willing to bring food to the door, either Amazon or other places, or you could buy the food online and then you go and you pop the trunk and then it was called contactless delivery to those who don't live here. We would drive up to the supermarket and then you don't, you don't touch anything with the people. They pack your groceries and they staple them and then you open the, the back and then they put your stuff in and then you take it and have to Lysol everything when you get home before you could even use it. And so when you can't have that, then you already know the society is changing and eventually no medical services. And I've shared about old prophecies where I said, people had better work on their faith because if anything happens to you in the forest, there are no doctors and nurses and stat and code green. It is God, please pray. Please make this bullet come out of this person's leg. God, please heal this strange bite that is making her foot fester. Her foot is squeezing pus out and you put your hand there and you pray with faith. That is why it is necessary to rest upon your most holy faith. This is why it is necessary to fast and pray and build up the reserves that you will need in the time where there are no medical services, eventually, America will be a shell of its former self. And this is the judgment of the Lord. He didn't say wrath. He didn't say the end of the world. He didn't say the tribulation period. He didn't say, and then the rapture comes. He said, this is my judgment. In order for God to judge this nation, I shouldn't even have to say this. Somebody has to be here. 
America will have a big war with Russia and China. This was the last thing that was written. America will have a big war with Russia and China, but before that, it will have many smaller wars and international conflicts. America's greatest war will be at home, fighting herself for several years in ways that will destroy the stability and infrastructure of the country. And without even knowing this, I already described this in the beginning of this video, so all you will need to go to, to do is to roll back and see that, that God says that America will, be, will face a surprise war by Russia and China, and they're coming here for conquest, they're coming here for precious metals, they're coming here because God says that America has some of the greatest art caches in the world, illegal art that they bought and took and stole and bartered for from museums. America is full of private art pieces that are in private collectors being held in what I saw in 2021. God showed me that a lot of these mansions, they have climate controlled rooms. So you go down one floor or two, and he said that underneath can be one piece of art that is worth several million, several hundred million and that no eye enjoys this piece of art. It only belongs to one man or one woman or one couple, and they press the special elevator and go down there into the climate-controlled room, and they look at this one piece of art sitting on the wall and meditate on it and enjoy that, knowing that they have something that only they have. Well, I saw the Russians dragging it out untold treasures in this nation. I mean, international pieces of art that belong to other countries that they have been crying for for decades, return the this and return the South African diamond and all, the, all those things. They are here and I saw the Russians bringing them out and the Russians had such joy in those things because God says um, that Putin and especially the elite, they're very much interested in the finer things, arts and wine and things like that. And the Chinese were just interested in human, human brothels, hu workers for their brothels and workers for their fields and their farms and things like that. And so here it is, a foreign invasion, but before that, smaller wars and conflicts. President Assad hating America for bombing Syria and being driven by that act into the arms of Russia, starting to have spats with India and starting to have spats with France. How can these things be the tribulation period? These things are leading us into the distress of nations. We still have to go through the international struggle for water where God says that there will be less and less water available because this world is sinful. And so when the sea is upset, the sea will spill itself everywhere, but nobody drinks seawater. The fresh water places will be draining into the sinkholes, rivers drying up, drought as a punishment for sin upon the world. Lots of people, not enough water to drink, distress of nations, the seas roaring. And then comes the time where the hearts start to go, men's hearts failing them, for the things that they see coming upon the earth. How can anyone say that the words I bring here are unbiblical when they have been written down before me and all I'm doing, all I am doing, because I have been graced to do it, is opening it up so that it makes sense. Opening it up so one sentence, the seas roaring, you then hear the different nations the floods they will have, the tsunamis they will have, the water disasters, the fact that God says he will wash away all these idols. We will start to see the, the statues, that big Brazil statue, his days are numbered. His days are numbered. That thing with the arms up there that everyone calls Brazil Jesus. He, he, he's on his way out and he doesn't know it. And so is Buddha and so is everyone else. God says that they will go down on their faces, just like that huge gold-plated statue in Japan, face, face planted, princess, whoever she is, they put her up and in one month, God came to say, don't stand in the way. You're actually blocking my view of the sunlight and just smashed her down to her face. More power to Jesus Christ. They will all go down, including the religions that don't have ostensible gods. Like Catholicism, like Mormonism, 
I will pound the hammer of the Lord until they all go to dust because I have the right and the authority to do so. These are the words of the Lord given to me April 15, 2023, an iron pen, a judgment that God says will not be put out because America has stirred his anger into fire that she cannot quench. Just a moment, please. I will end this video with two passages of scripture that support pieces of the prophecy that I spoke in the beginning. The first one is Jeremiah 17, and it says, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with the point of a diamond, it is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of your altar. Why your, while your children remember their altars and their wooden images by the green trees on the high hills, O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give as plunder all your wealth, all your treasures, and your high places of sin within all your borders. And even you, even you yourself, shall let go of your heritage, which I gave you, and I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. And this one passage here that God had me reading on, I think it was Friday, covers almost everything that I just stated. That America's sin has been written down with a pen of iron, with a diamond tip, it has been engraved. And where was it engraved? The scripture says it's engraved on the hearts. This is a huge indictment because in the Bible, the Lord says that a time will come when righteousness will cover the earth, as his glory will cover the earth as righteousness covers the sea. And he says, in that day, you will not have a need for anyone to be your teacher. No one will need to teach you. Why? Because he says, my laws will be written on your heart. But imagine God is telling us there's no room for these laws to be put on our heart because sin has been written on our hearts with an iron pen and a diamond tip. And when I first read this scripture all the way back in 2021, the Lord told me it takes a diamond to write upon as hearts as hard as diamonds. It says the sin is written on the horns of the altar. The horns of the altar I've shared many times are where you go into the sanctuary and you lay hold and you hold on to the little curvy tips at the four edges of that big brazen altar that they made to sacrifice the bulls. King Joab, I mean, not King, but Joab, Joab, the commander, uh, J David's commander did that um, to try and save his life when David told his son, I'm dying now. But the wickedness that Joab did against Abner, the son of Nun, a, a commander that I once had and loved before we split ways um, and he went to serve my son, do not allow Joab to die in peace because he dared to shed the, the blood of a man as brave as Abner. And so Joab, now knowing that his time had come, he ran into the sanctuary to lay hold of the horns of the altar. And sanctuary is something that's even known in Catholicism. It means that I know that I'm guilty. I'm not saying that I'm not guilty, but I'm asking desperation. And God made provision in his law, that when a man runs and cries sanctuary in the holy place that you're supposed to help him, when he runs into the temple and says sanctuary and grasps the horn of the altar, it means it's a desperate plea. I know I'm guilty, but have mercy, save me. But how, how bad is America that God says, the place that you should find mercy, grasping the horns of the altar, when you run there, he says, America's sin is already written on the altar. You can't put your hands on it to ask for mercy because in the place where mercy should be found, sin abounds. And this is what kills people's ability to follow what happens here because they go against what Apostle Paul says. Apostle Paul says that grace doesn't abound for us to increase in sin. But God is telling us, you're a nation that increased in sin so much that even mercy cannot keep up or help you. And so he says here, your children have all become adulterers with idols and images and worshiping on the high hills by the green trees. And so, excuse me, please. I will give all your wealth and treasures all of them, 
over to conquerors and even you yourself, you will let go of your heritage. To let go of your heritage basically means that you will be removed from that place. You will be taken away from that place. You will let go of the heritage that I gave you and you will go and serve your enemies in another land that you don't know because you stirred up a fire of my anger so great that it will burn forever. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. I will handle the other piece of scripture in another video. It is enough for today. The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for visiting the Master's voice. Thank you for giving your time and attention to the words of the Lord, not my words, the words of the Eternal One, Jesus Christ. And until I see you again, goodbye.